So according to some brand new reports, Marvel Studios has high hopes for their Avengers brand and where exactly we can see it get a big kickstart and how they're going to unfold the future of the MCU with the new Avengers. So let's get into all of this and break it down. So it's safe to say that Hollywood was proven wrong with Marvel Studios, with the idea of a shared universe, and with the fact that you can bring people over to watch another film they might not be interested in just because it's part of a larger shared universe. Ant-Man, I think, is a prime example of this along with the early Thors. So recently, there's been some articles out there talking about the fact that the new Avengers are in fact coming. Now, this is something I think we've known for a while. If you go all the way back to the investor calls last year from Disney and Bob Iger, they specifically talk about the fact that they are building out the future in the current films we're watching. And after Avengers Endgame, we're going to be going in a new direction. Now, this new Avengers, of course, initiative is, I think, that direction. And if you look at how they're looking at the future of the MCU with different franchises with new characters, such as Captain America, for example, it's a passing of the mantle. The Falcon is going to be the new Captain America. The Hulk is still going to be around. And then you look at some other characters that have yet to, um, let's say, finish up their arcs, right? Like, for example, the Guardians of the Galaxy. You start to understand that the future is as much a carryover from the last couple phases as it is building a new phase. And if you look at everything they've announced, for example, like She-Hulk, like Moon Knight, like Blade, like Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, you know, just a few examples, you understand that it's looking a little different. And then you start looking at some of the other things they've announced, like the X-Men like Fantastic Four that are in development, like a Black Panther sequel, and Captain Marvel 2, you start to see that it's a mixture of new and a mixture of old. Now, of course, you're going to have new things that are coming into the MCU, like contracts that are expiring from things that they didn't own because they made partnerships and things like that. And things are always changing. And now them looking to expand even further with prequels and filling out some back details and adding in characters like Yelena, for example, for Black Widow and them developing Thunderbolts. It makes sense that there's a sort of direction that they want to go in. That's not necessarily, um, you know, as built up as it was previously. And one of the big stories right now is, is that Captain Marvel 2 is going to kind of be a, a big kickoff initiative for what they're doing. Now, as it says, um, you know, it's still a rumor, but there seems to be more and more people backing this up and more and more evidence pointing towards it every single like step of the way. It looks like what we're going to get is Captain Marvel 2 is going to be the setup for the new Avengers. Now, of course, this goes all the way to, uh, I would say probably about six years ago where Kevin Feige was in an interview and he talked about building out characters from established franchises, saying that from now on, we don't want to do standalone films anymore. What we want to do is take characters that are established and introduce new characters in there to make the audience familiar with them and then spin those characters off into things that they want to see, like TV and other movies. And at the time, we didn't exactly know the extent of this, but now you look at it and you look at Miss Marvel, for example, that's an upcoming TV series, and Hawkeye, for example, another upcoming TV series. Obviously, those are going to spin off from established things and relate to these things. Miss Marvel, for example, there's no way that that doesn't include Captain Marvel. Again, that makes sense, and they said they're going to try to stick close to the comic book story, so there's the connection. And then, obviously... Miss Marvel is a Inhuman. The Inhumans are getting a reboot, a soft reboot of sorts in the MCU with Miss Marvel. So again, there's that connection. Then you have Spider-Man, who's a much younger character who's looking to be part of this new generation. Then you're bringing in Yelena. Then you have the Hulk who's staying around. And Mark Ruffalo even said in an interview last year that he believes that the Hulk is going to stay around as this figure who can show up anywhere and he's there to sort of look over a younger generation. Again, you have a character like Ant-Man who's going to get a third film 
and introduce some other bigger concepts to the MCU. And I don't mean bigger like Giant Man and all that. I mean like they're going to explore more of the, let's say the Quantum Realm and probably some other aspects of it. So again, there's that. And then you look at the likes of the Eternals, which I haven't even mentioned yet up until this point, because the Eternals are, again, a huge factor. They can introduce the X-Gene, which they're directly connected to. And again, that brings in the mutants, right? So then you have Wolverine, and then you have other characters that are doing their own thing, like Loki, who's getting his own series, and returning characters. So bringing all of them into Captain Marvel 2 makes sense because that movie was a huge financial success if you look at it it's the biggest superhero film of all time for a first outing of a character she didn't appear in anything else but she broke a billion easily again that's pretty impressive and when you look at those numbers i know some people might not be fans of that character i know some people don't like brie larson or don't like captain marvel and they're trying to be dismissive but it's a character that's very successful she sells merchandise. If you just look at it, it's everywhere. And you start to understand that they're using her as a, and I don't mean this in a bad way, she's a Trojan horse, right? You're going to go see Captain Marvel 2. Well, you might not in case you don't like Brie Larson or whatever. That's on you. But, you know, generalized, you go see Captain Marvel 2 and suddenly, well, there's Miss Marvel and she's on this Disney show. Okay. I guess I'll go check out Disney Plus. God knows I'm subscribed to it because apparently everybody is according to numbers. And by then, they'll have skyrocketed. So, again, you'll go, well, I guess I'll go check that out since Captain Marvel is going to be in that. And they just played a trailer and a little post credit scene. So you go tune into that and then you see, oh, who's the Sam Alexander kid? Nova? Wait, wasn't Nova in... Oh, Nova was in Guardians. Huh. Wait. Is this the character that's going to be in that new movie that they're developing? So again, they're going to use the same technique they've used in the past to bring in a new idea and slowly build it up. Now, what else is interesting is these reports going to talking about the Young Avengers specifically spinning off from Captain Marvel 2 into a Disney Plus series. And again, if we look at the initiative, that makes sense. You're going to have Miss Marvel. You're going to have Hawkeye. You're going to have younger characters, which we know they're trying to push to younger people to bring them in. So they look at that. They go, oh, OK. So you have young Avengers that maybe start off with three, maybe four characters, right? Because you can always use, you know, Lang, for example. Be like, hey, Ant-Man, how's your daughter doing? She good? She's going to be stature because she says she wants to be just like her dad when she grows up. Cool. Let's toss her in there. So you already have... A couple established characters, a few characters that are new. Maybe you bring in Blade's daughter as well. I mean, I don't know how you're going to handle it, but again, there's that option. So it starts to make sense. Now, the tricky one is Spider-Man. Is he going to appear on Disney Plus? Who knows? It's a Sony thing, but I think his time is guaranteed in the MCU, like I've said in other videos. So again, you start to formulate the idea of how they're doing this. And if we really think about it, Rocket Raccoon. CG character. Rocket could be a teacher at a campus. I don't know, but I'm, I'm just spitballing here, right? Like, you can always find ways to do it. And as I've said before, you have the Fantastic Four coming in. You have the X-Men. So you'll be able to involve these much younger characters in some sort of capacity. And again, build up another decade to 15 years of shared content. And it makes sense. And it makes sense that you're doing it with Captain Marvel 2. Because more so than anything they lend themselves towards that because people are going to go see that movie. Another film that's coming out that year, Black Panther 2. Black Panther, there's no way they don't mention Shuri as maybe taking over the mantle or maybe she was a Black Panther when we weren't, you know, seeing what's happening on the screen because there's so much time that's passed by. So again, I think they're going to slowly start to layer in that foundation through bits and pieces Captain Marvel 2 will really be the big kickoff to it. And then you look at the likes of Thor, which obviously Jane Foster, and who knows what other younger characters they could toss in there, and who knows what they could do with the multiverse, and maybe the rumors are true that the Enchantress is going to be a much younger actress. So if you're casting the actress that was rumored, who's about 15, 16 years old, three, four years from now, where she's 18, 19, maybe the Enchantress isn't a bad per se person maybe she's one of these in the middle characters and you toss her in there as well more female presence again 
it sounds like it's happening and it sounds like it's happening rather soon which is honestly quite awesome